What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing you a video on how to beat Eldritch. Now Eldritch is one of the breakout decks of the format courtesy of Secret Slayers. And this deck has just been dominating the online environment, whether you've been playing in online tournaments, watching online tournaments like my Crush Card Cup, which I've been bringing you guys feature matches for pretty much every single day for the past few weeks now. And if you've missed out, be sure to check out the link down in the description. I'll have a link to the playlist so you can catch up with the tournament. But this deck is just incredible. It's not your ordinary control deck. It does a lot of things different and so that's why I wanted to go ahead and bring you guys this video today on some tips, tricks, and strategies to help combat the deck if you happen to come across it on the online ladder. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So I want to start by discussing first how this deck functions and why it's so powerful and then get into the nitty gritty of what cards we can use to combat this deck. So why is Eldritch so strong? Well, there's a few reasons, right? When we see decks like this in the past that rely so heavily on their back row or their trap cards specifically, you know, they typically fall to a lot of the same types of cards. And while Eldritch still has an inherent weakness to some of these types of cards, the main strength of this deck is in its recursiveness. So many of the Eldritch cards are able to just banish themselves during the end of the turn to effectively replace themselves with another card straight out of the deck. And so every time you're chipping away at your opponent's resources, you're really not gaining much ground. You're just taking away cards from yourself primarily and taking minus ones because during the end phase, a majority of the cards, mainly the gold and land cards and the elixirs will just banish themselves during the end phase, replace the opposite type of card onto the field, and you pretty much have to combat that every single turn, and so playing against Eldritch can be quite a grind. Not to mention, because they are a trap-focused deck, they're able to play cards that not a lot of other decks are really able to incorporate. Cards like Skill Drain, for instance, are very good in Eldritch. Thank God we're not in the OCG, where they can play three Skill Drain in their version of Eldritch. Summon Limit's another one, because the deck doesn't really summon too many monsters in a turn, which is a little bit frightening. Can also summon monsters both on its own turn as well as the opponents. There's just an interesting slew of cards that this deck can take advantage of that most decks typically can't. Another thing is that when it's combined with other engines, like for instance the Invoked engine, the Invoked engine kind of adds another layer of dimension to the deck because now it's just not your ordinary control deck. Now it has a lot more offensive and dynamic capabilities because you've got stuff like Mechaba to be able to provide another layer of negation and protection not only for your board but to stop your opponent's plays. You've got stuff like Purgatrio just to end games out of nowhere and not to mention, Eldritch the Golden Lord is also just a beast of a card in itself. It's able to send threats to the graveyard. It is still a monster effect, but it's able to clean up a lot of threats rather easily. It is so recursive, just requiring you to remove any card from your field, sending it to the graveyard to effectively resummon itself as a 3500 body. And because its attack power is so high, not to mention it is a level 10, in tandem with that, you're able to, you know, go into options like Gustav Max or the uh, Super Juggernaut Rail Cannon Leave and just do huge amounts of damage so that when you have the opportunity, once you've whittled your opponent down of enough resources, you're able to clean out the game a lot quicker compared to some other control decks which might struggle in this regard. So the deck is really strong and if you haven't already seen it already, I'd highly recommend checking out all my feature matches from the Crush Card Cup showcasing it because it is definitely worth watching. So let's go ahead and talk about some uh, hand traps that are good against this deck because hand traps are rather universal in their application. That's pretty much what a lot of people like to go towards first because you can play these hand traps in your main deck pre uh, you know sideboard and the fact that they also have application against other decks as well that's a lot where a lot of people like to start a majority of their thinking so first up is ash blossom now ash blossom is rather effective against this deck primarily because it's able to stop eldritch the golden lord from hitting the field this is very important because if you are able to stop golden lord from getting to the board the majority of their deck is going to be rather weak because so many of the eldritch cards require golden lord to be on the field for the cards to be as potent as they are. You know, Conquistador can pop cards, Waquero can uh, banish cards a la Didi Crow, non-targeting by the way for both of those effects. The thing is when it comes to this deck is that if you can keep Golden Lord off the field, your life is going to be a hell of a lot easier. And Ash Blossom's really good at this because by hitting cards like Elixir of Black Awakening or Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine, these are the cards that are going to special summon Golden Lord directly from the deck. And since they have an effect that does so, Ash Blossom is very good at neutralizing those threats. Ash Blossom also is good because you're able to use it against stuff like Pot of Extravagance and another slew of cards that are able to just get cards from the deck to the hand either through drawing or adding. Effectively, you could use it against like Cursed Eldland, but that seems kind of bad because if you're not able to destroy the card, it's a continuous spell so they can just use it again on the following turn. But if that buys you enough time, then that's perfectly acceptable. But again, Ash Blossom is usually pretty universal for a lot of decks, so it's no surprise that it's good here. DD Crow is another good one. We mentioned Waquero being a uh, in 
archetype DD Crow, but I mean, DD Crow is just incredible against this deck. Not only are you able to banish Golden Lord from the graveyard, effectively preventing its recursion through its own effect, but you can also use DD Crow to banish the trap cards or even the spell cards in some instances of the Eldritch player's graveyard so that during the end phase, they aren't able to get those effects and reset cards to their field. So effectively at one for ones in that way, and depending on the game state, that could be enough to really slow your opponent down. I mean, DD Crow's always been good against graveyard focused strategies, and this deck is no exception. And this is one of the rare instances where the fact that DD Crow targets cards specifically really comes in handy. A couple of other hand traps that you may not want to main deck necessarily because they're a little bit narrow in that application, but you might want to use in your side deck would be something like Artifact Lancia. We've seen Lancia in the, in the past for any decks that require banishing. So Eldritch, because a majority of the cards require being banished to replace themselves with other cards from the deck, since Lancia lasts for the rest of the turn after being activated, this is a good way to kind of just put a lock on your opponent from being able to do anything for that turn and give you a small window to be able to go in and possibly take the game. There's also a very interesting card in Dimension Shifter, effectively being a macro cosmos for the turn that it's activated. This card's very powerful because by being able to banish all the cards that would be sent to the graveyard normally, it's very difficult for them to recover since they're not going to be able to banish any of the cards from their graveyard since they won't have a graveyard. We've seen this demonstrated in the past, and even though such few decks are able to take advantage of Dimension Shifter, if you're playing a deck that can, it might be a pretty decent option. But hand traps aside, now I want to discuss some options for going first. And one of the best going first cards in the game is Called by the Grave. This really shouldn't be much of a surprise. This falls in line similar to DD Crow because it's able to just banish cards out of the graveyard. Specifically, you'll be going after Golden Lord, but it also could hit hand traps as well. But getting rid of Golden Lord is one of the big targets here. And if you're able, like I said, to keep Golden Lord off the field, it's going to be significantly easier when you're going up against Eldritch. Another option is something like Abyss Dweller. This is a little bit more narrow because your deck has to be able to make Abyss Dweller, but there are some decks that can end rather easily at that. Dweller can just shut down any effects that activate in the graveyard, so that will definitely slow down the Eldritch player significantly. But then we also have a couple Link monsters that I don't necessarily think they're ideal for going first necessarily, but it makes more sense than going second, but they're just good cards you might want to have in your extra deck nonetheless, being Topologic Trisbania and Zero Boros. If you can get either one of these cards to stick, if your opponent just like goes set four and passes, and you can trigger one of these, the, all their cards will get banished. There's going to be no way for them to recover because they can't banish their resources to get more from the deck, and you are going to be in incredible shape. Now, do keep in mind, Golden Lord is able to just out these at any moment if they have Golden Lord in the hand. However, if you're able to kind of make it so that you have an opportunity to get one of these monsters to resolve, it is going to be an absolute blowout. But now I want to discuss some going first cards that you're probably not going to play in your main deck necessarily, but you're probably going to be opting to play in your side deck for games two and three. First up is there can be only one. I guess if you're playing a specific type of control deck, you might be already playing this, but majority of decks will not be. This card's pretty good. I mean, we've seen this used for the last several years against a multitude of different decks, meta decks specifically, and this deck's no exception because Eldritch is all primarily zombies. So as soon as one monster hits the board, it's going to be very difficult for them to summon more because they're all zombies, right? So they're not really going to have much that they can do. Another really good card, and we haven't seen this card in a long time, is Royal Decree, because guess what? They're all trap cards, right? So Royal Decree can just be very good at slowing them down significantly. Do keep in mind, though, again, Golden Lord can out cards like this. In addition to that, in games two and three, they're most likely going to be siding some sort of spell and trap removal that can be able to take care of cards like Decree or other floodgates. So bear in mind, the card can be good, but your opponent will definitely be countersiding for cards like this. And then lastly, we have a card that a lot of people joke about, but it's actually not as bad as it sounds being Prohibition. Remember how I said that keeping Golden Lord off the field is priority number one when it comes to this deck. And Prohibition actually does a pretty decent job of it. I mean, the big weakness here is that similar to all the other cards like it, again, like Decree and all these other ones, is that they are weak to the same types of disruption that your opponent most likely will be countersiding. So bear that in mind when you are deciding what cards you want to play for this deck, what options your opponent might be siding against you, and what the current meta is trending towards in their side deck. But let's say we won game one and now our opponent is going to force us to go second. We want to make sure we're equipped with the correct going second cards to help us deal with the 
Eldritch Onslaught. So first up is going to be uh, cards to specifically deal with Golden Lord specifically, cards like Kaijus or Mind Control. Both of these cards are very good because you're able to remove Golden Lord from your opponent's side of the field. And by doing so, you weaken their board significantly because without Golden Lord, their Wakero is not going to be banishing, their Conquistador is not going to be popping, they're not going to be able to use just a slew of cards that are in their deck. And so by doing this, you're going to be putting yourself in a very advantageous position. It's kind of similar to like with Sky Striker by giving them that Kaiju, it shuts off all their back row, albeit they are still able to use it just in a different way. The logic is still very similar. But Golden Lord aside, there's a plethora of cards we can use for going second to take out their back row. And that's what I wanted to discuss next. First up, Dango Seka. Do you guys remember this card? This has been one of the biggest blowout cards for back row. I think the biggest weakness here is that you have to commit to your normal summon to play Denko. However, if your deck can accommodate it and you don't really care about normal summoning, this card can just win games in its own right. Keep in mind though, Golden Lord can out it, so it does have a weakness, but it's still a very strong option nonetheless. We have some more generic spell and trap removal in this category as well. Cards like Lightning Storm and Evenly Match. Keep in mind though, with Lightning Storm specifically, it's not as good as you might think because yeah, you might be able to like one for four your opponent, but the problem is again with Eldritch, the cards are so recursive. So you might destroy three of their Eldixers or their Eldix uh, Golden Land cards, but then you can just banish them during the end phase and they're gonna get them all back. So if you don't take advantage of that, that turn specifically, then you're just gonna be pretty much behind or in a similar position to where you were before, unless you're able to control the game to a point where it's gonna be much more heavily in your favor or you just win the game outright entirely. But evenly match is much more preferred here because you're banishing all the cards on their field and that means they're not gonna be able to get any of those resources back. Some other generic options include cards like Twin Twister and Cosmic Cyclone. Again, Cosmic Cyclone being preferred here because it does banish the card instead of destroying it like Twin Twister would. You might see a lot of players actually opting to main deck Cosmic Cyclone since Eldritch is running amok in so many different places. We also have cards like Red Reboot. Now again, Red Reboot's a little bit dangerous because if you are not able to kill them like that turn exactly, you are giving them another resource to use to help pretty much snowball them into a victory. So Red Reboot, a very powerful card. It's limited for a reason, but just bear in mind, you have to be playing a very aggressive deck for Red Reboot to be used to its fullest potential. And last but not least, this is actually a really cool one that we've seen a few players starting to side deck, some of the uh, top level players specifically, and that is Anti-Magic Arrows. This is a really neat card that essentially during the battle phase, you activate it, and then the effects of spell and trap cards cannot be used for the duration of the turn, which means in main phase two, you have free reign to just set up anything you wish, which is incredible. If you're playing a combo deck, that's your window of opportunity to set up and pretty much wipe their whole board. You can use the aforementioned cards like Trisbania and Zeroboros to just immediately blow up the board. There's so many different things you could do with this card and it lasts for the rest of the turn, which means during the end phase, none of those Eldritch cards will trigger. So just keep this one in mind. This one's a little bit pricey, but at the same time, it's a really cool, neat trick you can use and a lot of players will not see it coming. So guys, that's gonna wrap up my video on how to beat Eldritch. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.